Hello, boys and girls. Today is chapter 18 in The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Thinking up the final adventure. The day after Father told Bruno that he would not that he would be returning to Berlin soon, Shmuel didn't arrive at the fence as usual. Nor did he show up the day after that. On the third day, when Bruno arrived, there was no one sitting cross-legged on the ground, and he waited for ten minutes and was about to turn back for home, extremely worried that he would have to leave out with without seeing his friend again, when a dot in the distance became a speck, and that became a blob, and that became a figure, and that in turn became the boy in the striped pajamas. Bruno broke into a smile when he saw the figure coming towards him and sat down on the ground, taking a piece of bread and an apple that he had smuggled out of his pocket and to give to Shmuel. But even from a distance, he could see that his friend looked even more unhappy than usual. And when he got to the fence, he didn't reach for the food with his usual eagerness. I thought you weren't coming anymore, said Bruno. I came yesterday and the day before that, and you weren't here. I'm sorry, said Shmuel. Something happened. Bruno looked at him, and he narrowed his eyes, trying to guess what it might be. He wondered whether Shmuel had been told that he was going home, too. After all, coincidences like that do happen, such as the fact that Bruno and Shmuel shared the same birthday. Well, asked Bruno, what was it? Papa, said Shmuel, we can't find him. Well, you can't find him. That's very odd. You mean he's lost? I suppose so, said Shmuel. He was here on Monday and then went on work duty with some other men, and none of them came back. And he hasn't written you a letter, asked Bruno, or left a note to say when he'll be coming back? No, said Shmuel. Well, how odd, said Bruno. Have you looked for him? he asked after a moment. Of course I have, said Shmuel with a sigh. I did what you're always talking about. I did some exploration. And there was no sign? No. Well, that's very strange, said Bruno. But I think there must be a simple explanation. And what's that? asked Shmuel. Well, I imagine the men were taken to work in another town, and they have to stay there for a few days until the work is done. And the post isn't very good here anyway. I expect he'll turn up one day soon. I hope so, said Shmuel, who looked as if he was about to cry. I don't know what we're supposed to do without him. I could ask Father if you want, said Bruno cautiously, hoping that Shmuel wouldn't say yes. I don't think that would be a very good idea, said Shmuel, which, to Bruno's disappointment, was a flat-out rejection of the offer. Well, why not, he asked. Father is very knowledgeable about life on that side of the fence. I don't think the soldiers like us, said Shmuel. Well, he added, with something as close to a laugh as he could muster. I know they don't like us. They hate us. Bruno sat back in surprise. I'm sure they don't hate you, he said. They do, said Shmuel, leaning forward, his eyes narrowing and his lips curling up in anger. But that's all right, because I hate them too. I hate them, he repeated forcefully. Well, you don't hate father, do you? asked Bruno. Shmuel just bit his lip and said nothing. He had seen Bruno's father on any number of occasions and couldn't understand how such a man could have a son who is so friendly and kind, have a son who is so friendly and kind. 
Well, anyway, said Bruno, after a suitable pause, not wishing to discuss the topic any further. I have something I would like to tell you. You do? asked Shmuel, looking up hopefully. Yes. I'm going back to Berlin. Shmuel's mouth dropped open in surprise. When? he asked his voice catching slightly in his throat as he did so. Well, this is Thursday, said Bruno, and we're leaving on Saturday, after lunch. But for how long, asked Shmuel. I think it's for forever, said Bruno. Mother doesn't like out with. She says it's no place to bring up two children. So father is staying here to work because the Fury has big things in mind for him. But the rest of us are going home. He said the word home, despite the fact that he wasn't sure it was home anymore. So I won't see you again? asked Shmuel. Well, someday, yes, said Bruno. You could come on holiday to Berlin. You can't stay here forever, after all, can you? Shmuel shook his head. I suppose not, he said sadly. I won't have anyone to talk to anymore when you're gone, he added. No, said Bruno. He wanted to add the words, I'll miss you too, Shmuel, to the sentence. But he found that he was a little too embarrassed to say them. So, tomorrow will be the last time we see each other until then, he continued. We'll have to say our goodbyes then. I'll bring you an extra special treat. Shmuel nodded, but couldn't find the words to express his sorrow. I wish we'd get to play together, said Bruno after a long pause. Just once. Just to remember. So do I, said Shmuel. I mean, we've been talking to each other for more than a year and we never got to play once. And do you know what else he added? All this time I've been watching where you live from out my bedroom window, but I've never seen what it's like. Well, you wouldn't like it, said Shmuel. Yours is much nicer. I'd still like to have seen it, said Bruno. Shmuel thought for a few moments and then reached down and put his hand under the fence and lifted it a little to the height where a small boy, perhaps the size and shape of Bruno, could fit underneath. Well, said Shmuel, why don't you then? Bruno blinked and he thought about it. I don't think I'm allowed, he said doubtfully. Well, you're probably not allowed to come here and talk to me every day either, said Shmuel. But you still do it, don't you? But if I got caught, I'd be in trouble, said Bruno, who was sure mother and father would not approve. That's true, said Shmuel, lowering his, the fence again and looking at the ground with tears in his eyes. I suppose I'll see you tomorrow then to say goodbye. Neither boy said anything for a moment, and suddenly Bruno had a brain wave. Unless, he began, thinking about it for a moment and allowing a plan to hatch in his head, he reached a hand up to his head and felt where his hair used to be, but was now just stubble that hadn't grown back fully. Don't you remember that you said, I looked like you, he asked Shmuel. Well, since I had my head shaved, <laughs> only fatter, conceded Shmuel. Well, if that's the case, said Bruno, and if I had a pair of striped pajamas too, then I could come over on a visit and nobody would be any wiser. Shmuel's face brightened up, and he broke into a wide smile. Do you think so, he asked. Would you do it? Of course, said Bruno. It would be a great adventure, our final adventure. A 
could do some exploring at last. And would you help me look for Papa, Papa, said Shmuel. Why not, said Bruno. We'll take a walk all around and we'll see whether we can find any evidence. That's always wise when you're exploring. The only problem is getting a spare pair of striped pajamas. Shmuel shook his head. That's all right, he said. There's a hut where they keep them. I can get some in my size and bring them with me. Well, then you can change and then we'll go look for Papa. Wonderful, said Bruno, caught up in the enthusiasm for the moment. Then it's a plan. We'll meet at the same time tomorrow, said Shmuel. Well, don't be late this time, said Bruno, standing up and dusting himself down. And don't forget the striped pajamas. Both boys went home in high spirits that afternoon. Bruno imagined a great adventure ahead and finally an opportunity to see what it was like on that other side of the fence before going back to Berlin, not to mention getting in a little serious exploration as well. And Shmuel saw a chance to get someone to help him to search for his papa. All in all, it seemed like a very sensible plan and a good way for their final goodbye. The end of chapter 18.